Hi, I'm here to talk about a revolution. Uh, this revolution is about how we do business on the International Space Station. But the revolution is also about something maybe even more important, and that's who's doing business on the International Space Station now. The story of NanoRacks begins in 2009, when my colleagues and I went to NASA. It was Mike Johnson, our tech guru, Rich Cummins, Rich Pornell, David Anderman, and we went to NASA and we said, we got a deal for you. We want to do something different. We want to change the way we work with NASA and you work with us in the private sector. And NASA's like, what you got in mind? And we said, look, we'll self-finance to put hardware on the station. We'll pay for it ourselves. We don't want money from you. But what we want in return is permission from you to let us market the hardware commercially around the world. NASA thought about this and they said, okay, we'll let you do it. And so we became in 2009 the first company in the world to own its own hardware on the International Space Station and to market it commercially. It was a real tough time. Mike and his team in Houston got our first research platform ready by April. We launched on STS-131. We got the second platform ready to go, I think in June or July. It was a tough time. Here we are, we're paying for this ourselves. And people would ask us, who's your investors? And we'd say, well, MasterCard and Visa. <laughs> so it was sort of the internet sort of software model. And, and at Nanorax, we started off with sort of a mantra of four things. And those four things were, we would always be commercial, we would always be open source, very important that this box, and I'll tell you about it, the Nano Lab, our platforms are open source. We want to tap the creativity of as many people around the world as possible. For too long space, and especially space utilization, there's been these barriers erected. Some are by government, some are just practice and mindset. So we've made a determination to be as open source as possible. And now we're really proud that there's at least three companies that we know that are building nano labs and building circuit boards that do different things. And that's really cool. Three is not a big number, but in the space business and creating an ecosystem, it's a big number. We also said we would only use as much as possible standardized hardware. We didn't want to invent anything new. And finally, miniaturization. You can do a lot today in a small four inch by four inch uh, by four inch box. But equally important, it's expensive to get to space. Okay, and the smaller, as small as you are, okay, the, the smaller you are, the cheaper it is. Okay, and, and so this is a, I hope a video, maybe a video, of our, uh, of our platform on the station and it shows the astronaut, whoops, okay, this is another one, this is another video, and one of our mantras is also, it doesn't have to be perfect, the hardware. We can get over that mindset. Watch this nano lab. astronaut Don Pettit is loading some biologicals into our nano lab, and the, it pops open. Well, in the old days, NASA would have a whole investigative team. What does Don do? <laughs> Duct tape, okay? That's a new NASA and that's a new partnership. And I have to tell you, no, I, I, I'm being serious because when Mike Johnson goes into the shop in Houston and we design some of the hardware, we don't say, it's gotta be perfect. It's gotta work every time. What, in the old days, it would take three, four, five years to build a piece of hardware for low earth orbit. And then it would take two, three years to get on the manifest. So everything had to be perfect. One of our, we're a small company, we have a lot of mantras. One of our mantras is, it's okay to fail. Failure's okay, you learn things from failure. And when we first said that to NASA, they were like, what do you mean failure? And we said, it's okay. If something doesn't work, we had uh, the Fisher Institute of Israel did a stem cell and cancer cell project. It didn't really work the first time, it's interesting. What did they do? They flew with us again a second time. And it's a whole new way of thinking. We've promised ourselves we will be as commercial at NanoRacks as any business is on the planet Earth. Why should space be different? So another example is at NASA, they prioritize the payloads. And they spend a lot of time saying, okay, this payload is valuable. You'll go here on the manifest and this one's valuable. And I was at a meeting at NASA and a woman said to me, 
How do you prioritize your payloads? And I was like, ma'am, when the check clears the bank, you go to the front of the line, okay? <laughs> that's, that's commercial, that's not commercial space, that's commercial. And we've learned, haven't we, in the last 20 years, that the best system for utilization, for commerce, for doing business, is commercial. So how have we done? We went, uh, you know, we're pretty nervous. We're self-financing. We went operational in August of 2010. And let me sh introduce you to some of the new faces of space researchers. These are students in El Paso, Texas, and they uh, had the experience of doing a complex biological uh, payload via Nanorax. They're working with our educational partners, NCESSE. And in the year and a half we've been operational, Jeff Goldstein at NCESSE has, has signed up over 30 school districts in America who have flown on the International Space Station complex biological payloads with no NASA funding. NASA tells us this is the first time in history there's been a national space student program like this with no NASA funding. We've flown about 45 to 50 payloads in the last year, year and a half. We have uh, 80, over 80 payloads under contract now. And recently, NASA gave us uh, permission to put an external pla a platform, one of our platforms, outside the station. So that's a major step forward. Again, self-finance. We're taking no money from NASA in the traditional sense. We welcome them as a customer. But because they come in as a customer, they don't tell us how to design they don't tell us, you know, how to do it. And NASA's beginning to say, you know what? Because you got your money on the line, we know it's going to be as safe as possible. And they're right about that. So you need a lot fewer people. When you go commercial and when it's open source, people come to you and give you ideas. And it's not just in America. These four things that is our core mantra, commercial, open source, uh, uh, standardized hardware and miniaturization. Here's a, a customer of ours from Vietnam, a university. We're becoming the first company uh, in the world to deploy a satellite from the International Space Station. And if you look at the picture, they're holding three satellites. And if you notice, it's in the same form factor as our nanolabs. And when we set out to do our nanolabs, we said, let's take the standard uh, design form factor known throughout the world so that there's no technology transfer, so everybody knows what they're doing. And these are a uh, customer of ours who and, uh, was deploying from the station, and we were able to do it in our average time, which we're averaging from contract signing to deployment nine months. This is a workshop we held in Riyadh, and we're very proud that the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has signed a multi-year agreement with us for students and researchers to use the International Space Station. And uh, we've also signed three schools in Israel, uh, and it's not just students. I, I brought a lot of the pictures of the students because they're more powerful to me somehow. But we're also uh, flying researchers doing cancer and stem cell. And so it's really running the gamut in the uh, 80 payloads we now have under contract. This is a fascinating story. This is Valley Christian of San Jose. And these folks are right in the middle of Silicon Valley. And it's a high school. And they became the first high school to pay their own way to go to the International Space Station. And their parents are all in Silicon Valley, so trust me, the sophistication of the circuit board and their nano lab was unbelievable. And when we, when we went to the NASA safety review, the NASA folks kept saying, this is a high school? <laughs> but it just shows that when you have the open source, when you lower the barriers, you don't know where the next great idea is gonna come from. We accept that in software, don't we? We accept that in, in computers. We accept that in biology and genetics. We've never really accepted that in space. We've still taken the view, many of us, that space is different. It takes years. And we're part of this new revolution showing that if you apply standard commercial practices, work closely with a new NASA, pass that safety test, uh, safety uh, review boards, there's a lot that will change and a lot of people will come forward. There's also another uh, sort of new way of thinking I wanted to share with you. We realize, and, and we now have uh, three platforms pretty much on the station, a fourth going outside. We have microscopes. Uh, we have some other hardware, all self-financed. And we realize there's no centrifuge. 
So we were talking to our friends in Germany at Astrium, and they knew of a centrifuge that had flown five times on the shuttle, and they thought it was in a museum. It had been put away, it had been retired. We took it out of the museum. You don't have to reinvent hardware. The, the whole concept of, you know, I have to build the hardware, it has to be perfect. We don't think that's necessary anymore. So this is the message I'd like to leave with you today is that, you know, this is a really exciting time and we get jaded because things move slowly. And for those of us who've been working this for a very long time to try and get space, to be just another place to do business, this is our moment. You can fly to low Earth orbit now on any number of vehicles. And by the way, we were very proud to be the only commercial payload on uh, SpaceX. And we had 15 research payloads on there, and they just came down a few days ago on Soyuz, and we delivered it to the customer yesterday. That's commercial. We need NASA's help, but that's the proper role of the government. NASA is our landlord, they're our regulator, but they're no longer our competitor. And that's really beautiful. We got a space station up there. It's going to be there for a long time. And if we can show, show others and maybe show ourselves that it's possible in space to do normal commercial practices, I am positive that the future for us in low Earth orbit and far beyond will be far greater than we ever dreamed of. Thank you.